Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willowbound Journals and today I have a fun journal journey tag. This was inspired by February and June's video where she answered these questions from the journal journey tag and I love tags, I love questions, you know me, I say that questions are my love language and I thought I would just give this tag a bit of a go while I share a flip through of some of my personal journals. Uh, these are the ones that I made and kept for myself to fill up with my own personal journaling and I'm going to do it in order of the first journal I made for me and going through in order of the journals that I kept for my yearly journals. So I started in 2017, so this is my 2017 journal. The next one will be 2018, 2019 will be the one after that, and so on. And then I think at the end I share some miscellaneous journals um, that I call my treasure journals. And I think at the very end I share one that I haven't filled up yet, but I made it for me um, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to use it yet but yeah I love it and I can't part with it <laughs> so this will kind of give you a little of a bit of a look at my journaling style the way I journal and how it has changed and evolved through the years um, so yeah I hope you enjoy seeing that in the background while I answer these fun questions so the first one is when did you start making journals and show your first journal if you still have it so this is my very first personal journal that I made myself, but I don't have the very first journal that I ever made. That one uh, actually got sold to one of my neighbors. She came over one day and I was just showing her the journals that I'd made and she ended up buying my very first one for her niece, I believe it was, either her niece or her granddaughter. And she was telling me that they loved all the little pockets and the secret things hidden, the flips and the flaps and all that kind of stuff. It was sort of like a fairy themed um, journal with lots of uh, tags and journal cards and lots of embellishing. So lots of diamantes and pearls and all that kind of stuff. When I first got into it, I, yeah, I just absolutely loved it. I, it was actually a chipboard journal. There were four chipboards and they connected with the metal rings and I just put papers in between the boards to be the pages of the journal and I just had so much fun decorating each of those four boards front and back and decorating each of the pages with lots of pockets and things like that but yeah as for my personal journal this was the first one I made for me I made it out of an, a book cover and uh, yeah it's it's very eclectic and very uh, fun. I wasn't really sure what I was doing back then in 2017. Um, but I remember the moment, it was August 2017, when I was about to go to sleep. And hang on, I'll tell this story for the next question. The next question is, did someone inspire you to start making journals? If so, who? Yes, big time. So here's the story. <laughs> uh, you might have heard it if you've watched my channel for a while, but for those who are new, welcome, first of all. And this basically is like a life-changing moment for me. Um, in August 2017, one night I was all ready for bed. I was in bed and just, you know, I watched YouTube to help me get to sleep or just to unwind at the end of the night. And I must have been looking up something to do with like journal prompts or, you know, how to make your own journal or something to do with journaling because I went down this rabbit hole and discovered junk journals through Johanna Clough and also Amity Bloom. But I always uh, credit Johanna Clough as the first person who introduced me to junk journals. Uh, but I did uh, discover Amity Bloom's channel that same night. But I was just so inspired that I got up out of bed I pulled out all my craft supplies. It was like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. And I just got an old book from an op shop that I picked up. I possibly had even got it for free. It was like a random copy of Harry Potter. You know, when you go to the op shop back then, there were just lots of Harry Potter books filling the shelves at op shops, thrift shops. Um, and I was like, oh, well, I 
I don't need to use this book. I already have a copy. I've got this spare copy here, so it doesn't matter if I ruin it. And I just had fun playing. I glued things on. I put stickers on the pages. I covered things up knowing that it didn't have to be perfect because I intended to throw it out afterwards. And I did. I did throw it out afterwards because it was just for me to purely play and try to get my head around this new style of crafting, of decorating the pages. Because what I fell in love with when I saw these junk journal videos was the fact that, because I've always loved journals. I've always, always been a journal. I've been a lifelong journal. I have a million journals on my shelf, like store-bought ones that I filled. But when I saw these junk journals, what really um, impressed me was that the pages themselves were already beautiful. They weren't just blank pages. They already had something decorative on there. So they were very inviting and very engaging. And then you could add all your words on top and you could stick all your photos on top. I loved also that Junction was combined many of the things that I was already doing, but didn't have a way of bringing them all together. So I was a memory keeper. I was, I had scrapbooked. I had made cards. I did jewelry making. I did photography. I loved keeping ephemera I didn't know that's what it was called back then but I have a folder for every year of my life with different ephemera and this world of junk journals gave me a creative outlet to bring all of these things I had already been doing together in one sort of book in one journal so I was just so inspired and from there it was like I did nothing else as soon as I got home from work I made journals until I went to bed and on the weekend as soon as I woke up I made journals And I just, I, yeah, people were always asking me back then, like, how do you make so many journals? You're like a journal making machine. And I was like, well, if you knew that how much time I spent making journals, I literally, every spare second, I couldn't get enough of it. I loved making them. I wanted to stay up till like 3 a.m. making them because it was just such a fun thing to do. So yeah, Johanna Clough was the one who originally inspired me, that special mention also to Amity Bloom, because those were the two I um, really resonated with um, that first night I discovered junk journals. So then the next question is, what is your journal style? And this is kind of interesting because there's kind of two ways to answer this, because there's journals that I make for my shop, for other people. And then there's the journals that I make for myself and my own personal journaling style. They're quite different. Um, For my personal journaling style, I would say it's very clean. (laughs) I I don't really like ripped edges. I'm not a grungy person. I I like delicate, clean, pretty things. I I, I just love um, very very elegant classic I don't know things like that but also there's a part of me that loves like the the colorful the playful the unique of course as well but yeah I tend to love more of a clean a pretty delicate style um and yeah my first journals are a bit chaotic and to be honest when I look back at them they're a bit of an eyesore to me it's not the thing it's not aesthetically pleasing to me like I'm glad I have them they're wonderful memory keepers they're really fun and engaging to look at that's wonderful but yeah I now have a bit more of a streamlined style a bit more simple (laughs) style a bit less chaotic um and yeah I think the more I went into this junk journal world I I kind of just experimented with all different styles at the beginning and as I learned what I liked, I have, yeah, I've learned that I prefer more of a clean, classic, ordered <laughs> style because um, I guess that's what I am in real life too. I'm, I'm very structured, ordered, methodical. I'm a very systematic type of person. I, I love order. Order makes me feel secure and, um, yeah, anyway, so that's kind of my own style I do love vintage in terms of like themes um I love vintage and florals in particular (laughs) um do I use speaking of themes the next question is do you use a theme to get started on a journal okay well when I am making journals um you know for my shop or for other people yes I always 
I can't really think of a time I didn't start with a theme. Even if the theme is eclectic and random, like to me that's still a theme. Um, I always have a theme for sure. It always starts with either a colour theme or it might be vintage or botanical or garden or bird or butterfly or boho, um, fairy themed, uh, just thinking of the ones that I love making the most. Uh, off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I always pick a theme first. I always say this, the suppliers tell me what to make. Um, and basically, I just see what themes I have enough of in my supplies. And when I have enough to make a journal, I go ahead and make it. Um, how long does it take you? How long does it take for you to make a journal? Well, uh, I think, like many journal makers, it varies for me. Um, I can, my quickest journals I can make in an hour, under an hour, you know, those like single signature Daphne's diary journals or like a really basic, simple paper bag journal, like under an hour, you can whip those out real quick. Um, if it's just a single signature, no embellishments, all the suppliers are just ready there for you. Um, it's just a matter of folding papers and binding them. <laughs> like it's really simple. You, you can make a journal in half an hour, I reckon. Um, but yeah, for the more embellished journals where you've got to, you know, hand make all the tags and the journal cards and so on the pockets. And if you're going to add things like fabric and lace and all the, um, the stickers and the sequins and um, you know, combining all different supplies, cards, envelopes, bags, wallpaper, um, tickets, all the things, you know, it all takes time. Um, so the more involved a journal, obviously it's going to take a lot longer. And so it can go from anything from, you know, half an hour to, <laughs> for me, years. Some of my journals have taken years to finish, um, uh, just a lot of the time it comes down to collecting supplies, making enough ephemera and um, that kind of thing. But yeah, on average, I guess it can take a day to a week. Maybe, you know, it could take up to two weeks, up to a month sometimes. But if I have a specific project in mind, I can get that thing done quick because I will stop everything else I will stop every other creative project and I will stop everything else in my life to get that project done. Um, and I will just work on it for, you know, 10 hours straight if I need to, um, because I tend to work on things. Like if I have a specific thing to do, I will get that thing done. <laughs> Again, that's just kind of my nature. Same when I had um, university assignments or school homework to do, I would, I wasn't a person who, um, did it in small doses. Like I, if I had an assignment to do, I would do it straight then and there, no matter how long it took me to do it. Um, but if I don't need to do it with a deadline or anything, then it can take months sometimes because I am a mood journal maker and I just make what I feel like in the moment. So sometimes I will make I'll just be in a cover making mood. So I'll make like 30, 40 covers across a couple of weeks. Um, across another month, I might only make tags, you know. <laughs> so um, that's kind of, yeah, how I, how I make things. <laughs> um, so words, let's see if I can get my words out a bit clearer. <laughs> the next question is, what is the first thing you do when starting a journal? So I guess this means when starting to make a journal, for me, it's just to look around at my supplies and see what I have enough of. Uh, if I have a specific vision of a journal that I want to make, I will buy materials for it. I will source materials for it. Um, so the first part is just, you know, assessing what I have, gathering the supplies needed, um, and then I will go ahead and once they're gathered, I usually start with the cover. That's like for me, a journal is all about the cover. If it doesn't have a nice cover, I'm, I don't want to open it. I don't want to use it if it doesn't have a nice cover. So the, it's all about the cover. If I have a beautiful cover, that's where it all starts. And the cover tells me what kind of journal it will be, what theme it will be, what types of pages would go in there. For me, it mostly starts with the cover. Not all the time. Sometimes if I have a lot of, for example, bird pages, 
I will just go ahead and get those pages ready, even if I don't have a specific cover in mind. And I just trust the process that eventually something will come my way that will speak cover to me. Uh, but usually it starts with the cover. And even if I don't have a vision for a journal, um, like, like I said, I can make 30 covers and they just sit on my shelf. And at the right time, I'll pull out the cover and it will be like, oh, I know what to do now with you. Um, <laughs> uh, other times I have all the materials right before me. You've seen me, if you've, um, seen over on my Patreon, I do start to finish journal making series each month. Those ones, I collect all the materials in advance. I gather them. So I already know, you know, I've pretty much already have an idea of what the cover will be, what the pages will be, what the embellishments will be. And it's just a matter of making it, making what I envision in my head. Uh, so yeah, I usually start with the cover. Uh, the next question is what style cover do you prefer to make or use? Well, out of all of these journals that I'm sharing with you today in this video, all of them, but one, I think, are hard covers. So that says something. <laughs> I prefer hard covers. Um, I don't know, I guess it's because to me that feels more traditional, like a more classic journal. All of my uh, store-bought journals were hardcover journals. Um, so to me, a journal feels like more traditional for me if it's a hardcover, even though that can be quite bulky sometimes and hard to work with um, and you get alligator mouth a lot more than with a fabric cover journal. I see all the pros of a soft cover, but there's just something about a hardcover journal for me. It just feels a bit more special in a way. I don't know. The quality, I don't know, something to do with the hardcover. But I do love soft soft cover too. I just gravitate personally towards the hardcover. And I generally love to use either a book, like a pre-existing book cover as the hardcover journal cover. Um or I love making my own with chipboard. So that's always fun as well because it feels like I get to make the whole thing from scratch and that sort of feels a bit more special. But I love using book covers as well because as a book reader and as a book lover, I love pairing the two together, journals and books. Like journals and books are just two of my all-time favourite things. I love reading. I love writing. I love words. They, they all go together. <laughs> The next question is, if you make a soft covered journal, what materials do you use? So I have made plenty of soft cover journals. Um, basically, I will either use manila folder or thin chipboard or fabric, like a quilted uh, base that I put fabric over the top. I'm just trying to think, is there any other type of... Um, soft cover. Oh, magazines. Uh, magazines can be used as soft cover. Uh, paper bags, of course, all my paper bag journals. That's probably my signature style, um, the paper bag journal. Uh, that one, yeah, is I guess classified as a soft cover journal. Um, but yeah, my mind usually thinks of fabric cover journals as the soft ones, but I use all sorts of materials to make more of a soft cover journal. The next question is, do you use ephemera you get in a kit or do you, or do you prefer to make your own? Um, well, of course, on the one hand, uh, I would prefer to make my own just because I love the idea of making something from scratch. Like you just feel so much more ownership with that and you've, you know, you make you make the whole thing with your own hands. Like that just feels really good when you make something with your own hands. Um, but at the same time, depending on the kit, there are some beautiful, beautiful kits out there. There are some beautiful ephemera. I'm thinking specifically of like vintage ephemera, um, like beautiful vintage postcards with florals and I'm thinking of even like Amity Bloom's beautiful ephemera that she puts in her kits like those are just stunning I love them I adore them they're so beautiful I love using them yeah the one downside is it does feel a bit not as special because it's not authentic so my favorite ephemera is actually just not even handmade. <laughs> My favorite ephemera is authentic, original, um, vintage p 
pieces, you know, vintage postcards, vintage playing cards, vintage tickets, tally cards, bridge cards, those kinds of things where they're really decorative on the front, but hopefully they've got some blank space on the back so you can write on the back of the postcard or you can write on the um, on the tally card. Uh, so yeah, I actually prefer authentic, original, vintage ephemera um, out of all of those options. The next question is, do you enjoy participating in prompt-inspired projects? Uh, if this means like in terms of making a journal, I don't think I do. Um, I think I prefer just to create what comes from my own head. Um, like I find that so enjoyable to be able to yeah, put that vision in my head and turn that into a reality, make it with my own hands. Like I love that. Um, and I find if I was to use a prompt, I like for some people that is really fun. To me, I would find that I think stressful because I have to, like I've, I'm limited, limited myself to a prompt and I don't want to place limits. I just want to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> I just want to create whatever I want to create. But in terms of journaling, that's a different story. I love using prompts when it comes to like filling my journal pages. And um, yeah, I take journal courses. I love taking journal courses and I love teaching journal courses where I just basically create my own journal prompts and I do them all myself first with all my courses. Um, I first and foremost do them for me. I I, I do them because they feel a need for me and um, I always do my own journal prompts. So uh, yeah, I really can't speak highly enough of journal prompts. They're something that I really enjoy. Anytime that I'm stuck or um, uninspired or unmotivated, I turn to journal courses uh, because they inspire me they get me excited about journaling and trying different styles as well and trying different things getting me out of my comfort zone which then helps me to grow and learn um, and all that kind of thing so yeah I do enjoy some prompt based projects or inspired projects if they're if you're counting like journal courses there are free ones out there too and there are challenges like free challenges some of you might have heard of things like Messy May or Junk Journal July. Um, there's countless other ones out there that are totally free and many of them run every year. I did Messy May last year and absolutely loved it. I tried to do it again this year, but I have like too many other creative projects going at the same time. Like I'm taking courses, teaching courses, I'm writing my book, I'm making journals. So as much as I, I love Messy May, I ended up doing only about five or so of the prompts. I loved all five of the prompts though. Um, so I, I do recommend Messy May. Um, and I, oh, every year I keep thinking, yeah, I want to do junk journal July, but I don't know, maybe the middle of the year is just like a really busy time for me. It's right in the middle of, you know, all, all the courses that I'm teaching and the workshops that I'm running. And, um, and so as much as there's, there's so many courses out there, there's so many that I want to do. There's so many that I want to try. There's so many challenges. Um, but, at some point, you just have to <laughs> just pace yourself and do only what you can do. So I've had to say no to some courses and some challenges just because I've been feeling overwhelmed with so many creative projects, but I look forward to doing them in the future. <laughs> um, what else? The next question is, how many journals have you made so far? So one of the best things that I ever did when I started this journal making journey back in 2017 was I kept a record of every single journal that I made and I just keep it in a little um, traveler's notebook and let me, I'm just flipping through that right now so I can tell you how many journals I have made. Let me see, where are we? Okay, I have made 1,431 journals. So that's pretty fun. I, looking back now, I wish I did do my setup of listing the journals that I made differently. I wish I also, like what I do at currently is I just write down the number, then I write down the type of cover it was, 
and then I write down the theme. But I wish I'd recorded more to eat details, things like um, who, who bought it, who it went to and any like little notes because sometimes people leave me notes about why they bought it and why it spoke to them and all that kind of thing. If it was a custom order, if it was a gift, if it was for a giveaway, if it was um, like a birthday present or if it was um, a personal journal, I, I'd love to record all those types of things too. Um, and as I go through my list, I circle all the ones that get sold and I have like this color coordinated system where I try to record the ones for me. So all the ones for me, I tried to either circle in blue um, and all the ones that sold, you know, circle in a different color, for example. But I wasn't very good at keeping that up. <laughs> and I also wanted to like circle in a different color, like the custom orders, the ones that were a gift, um, like have them all color coded. But yeah, I complicated it way too much and I forgot what all the colors meant and so I just stopped doing that so <laughs> now I just circle the ones that are sold I should start underlining the ones that I keep for me maybe that would help sort it all out and every time I think oh I should record all these details like who it goes to and what type of journal it was and all that kind of thing but I yeah, it's a nice idea. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so I think because I've I'm almost done filling up a traveler's notebook, recording all the journals I've made, and I keep thinking when I start a second traveler's notebook, I will just um, that's when I will start recording all those other details. Um, yeah, th maybe even recording things like how many signatures it was, if it was embellished or not embellished, that kind of thing. Maybe even the size, the number of pages. I know other some other journal creators, they record all of that information. Um, so I feel, think that would be really fun. I do take photos of them all as well, but that sort of clutters up my computer. So I have been deleting some of the ones that are either repeats, you know, because I make a lot of for example, Edith Holden journals, a lot of vintage French journals. So I just keep my favorite ones um, in certain themes, for example, uh, because I do also use my channel as an online diary to record the journals that I make to show them all. And so I feel like maybe I can delete most of the photos of my journals because I always have my channel to remember the journals that I made. Although sometimes it is fun. I was looking back at my photos of the journals I made um, recently and it was quite fun just to see all the journals and be like oh yeah I remember that one I forgot about that one and oh that one was so fun to make oh and I'm so glad I made that one and yeah so it was like a trip down memory lane a trip down journal lane um, okay so the next question is what do you enjoy the most about making journals uh, for me I've always been creative like ever since I was a kid I was coloring in I was drawing I was painting I was making jewelry as I got older I was I would make my own books I would um I then got into like photography then I got into scrapbooking and card making and so I've always always been creative did art all the way through high school it was one of my favorite subjects along with English um, absolutely love creating. Creating for me is like breathing air. Um, it, it comes easily to me, naturally to me, and I can't not create. Um, so yeah, for me, the, what I enjoy most is that I get to create and it's creative expression. And that's the great thing about journals. Like I often get questions from people saying, like from outside the journal world, they'll ask me things like, well, don't you get bored making so many journals or don't you get sick of it or that kind of thing? And I'm like, well, no, because there are so many different kinds of journals you can make. And yes, there have been times where I, I have gotten um, a bit unmotivated with making journals. There have been times where I thought, oh, I'm done making journals now. Maybe I'll find a new creative outlet. But every time that happens something will spark like I'll find a new material to use or I'll find a different theme that I want to explore or a new technique that I want to try and yeah it's just boundless like the 
ways you can create journals. There's so many options, the the themes that, and the way you can combine them. There's so, so many possibilities. And yeah, I, I love it. I, I do always say though, um, throughout my whole life, while I have been always creative, the way that I create has changed. You know, like I just shared, it went from colouring in to drawing to then painting then to card making then to scrapbooking then to jewelry making then to photography like I don't make jewelry anymore I don't scrapbook anymore I don't don't make cards anymore because I would find something new to do so I've always had this inkling you know that eventually maybe one day I will find something else that I love to do after junk journals um and I kind of already have like I really love it's kind of similar art journaling and collage like those are two of the things I'm really loving at the moment and I love making books I really enjoy um, writing books and um, I also am at the moment having a bit of a phase with creative self-portraits I'm loving getting into that world diving into the world of creative self-portraits so yeah I don't know how long I'll be making journals for for now, I, can, I don't see any time that I'll be stopping anytime soon. Um, but I'm also aware that things change and there will, I will always be creating. I know I will always be creating, um, but it's just a matter of what I'm inspired to create in any given season. Um, and yeah, I love that we get to have so many options out there of things that we can create. But the great thing about junk journals, and this is another reason why perhaps this has been a longer phase than other phases of creativity that I've had. Like this has lasted since 2017 now. My scrapbooking phase only lasted maybe two years, three years. My card making phase probably only lasted one year. (laughs) Um, My jewelry making phase, that one actually lasted quite a while, but I have no desire to make jewelry anymore. Um, But with junk journals, the thing is, it combines so many crafts. Like, I love that. I get to combine my photography. I get to combine my jewelry making, my card making, my scrapbook, scrapbooking, my journaling. I get to combine all of those into junk journals. Um, So that's why it's such a versatile craft to do. Um, And... I get to do collage, I get to do art within the world of junk journals. Um, I make digitals. Sometimes I will paint and do watercolour and turn those into digitals that can be used in junk journals. So there's just so many ways. Like I will take photos and I turn those into journal cards for junk journals. Um, As a writer, I love coming up with quotes and I will turn those into quote cards that then become journal cards for journals. So I I love how junk journals combines so many different crafts, so many of my hobbies, so many of my different interests and passions. So yeah, if I ever get sick of one particular area of junk journaling, I can always just go and, you know, do a different area. And that's what I do sometimes. I jump around. So if I'm feeling a bit burnt out making physical journals, I will work on digital you know, digital tags and journal cards. If I'm getting sick of, yeah, doing signatures and cutting paper and whatever, I will just collage. (laughs) And then the collage can be turned into collage papers, collage covers, collage tags, collage journal cards. So it all kind of works together and it's just a wonderful craft. Um, And I think that's why so many people like it as well, because, You know, different people love different aspects about junk journals, but still comes under that umbrella of junk journals. It's out of all the crafts out there that I've discovered, I think it's like the most versatile one. I mean, maybe some people would say art journaling is, um, but it kind of all crosses over to me now. Collage, art journaling, junk journaling, memory keeping, scrapbooking, it all kind of comes under one giant umbrella and maybe that umbrella is called creative expression (laughs) or or creative journaling Um, but yeah I'm a big big advocate for journaling 
in whatever way that it is done, whether that's done through photo journaling, whether it's just done through writing, whether it's done through collage, whether it's done through paint and art, or whether it's done through textiles and fabric, or if it's done with papers uh, and or junk. You know, some people love using junk um, to upcycle things that would normally go into the rubbish bin. Like, it's just so versatile. <laughs> I love, 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 love journaling. Um, and I know that a lot of you also love journaling for exactly the same reasons or for similar reasons. And it's just a wonderful world, <laughs> whether you're new to it or whether you've been part of it for a long time. It's yeah, just a wonderful community as well to be part of, to connect with other people who love to create and who just create for the pure joy of it. Um, yeah, it's so good. So good. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I've probably rambled on long enough about my journals and how I journal and my journaling journey, but I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you enjoyed seeing some of my personal journals. This is the last one that I was sharing in this video. This is a journal that I haven't filled up yet. And actually, this is the second time that I made it. The first time I had a collection of three. There was Snow White, Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. I ended up sending Cinderella to um, Johanna Clough because, you know, she's inspired me on this whole journey and she made some fairy tale journals, one with Cinderella, and I really loved them. I thought they were so beautiful and so inspiring. So when I made a Cinderella journal in this style, I, I don't know, I just wanted to send it to her as a thank you and just thank her for all the inspiration she's given me. Um, and I did put Sleeping Beauty in my shop, but I took it out. <laughs> Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I take out journals if I want to keep them for me. But yeah, I redid it um, using only my favorite papers. So vintage ledgers, Tim Holtz papers, um, and papers from Johanna Clough's digitals. Um, only my favorite pages. Love, love, love. Um, I'm not sure how I will use it. Um but every time I flip through it and think, oh, do I part with this now? Is it ready for me to let go of because I'm not using it currently? Um, this one, no, I, I still can't get rid of because I love all of the pages. Like I hand chose all of those pages for me. They all mean something to me. Um, and I don't know. It's just, I'm not sure how I want to use it yet, but it's there. It's waiting. It's ready for me. And I love it. I really love this journal. It's one of the more... I don't know, one of the earlier journals that I made um, and I adore it. This is my style of journal, this one right here, where there's no pockets, no sewing, no tucks, flips, flaps, none of that. It's just the pages that are beautiful on their own. Um, yeah, that's my style of journal. Love, love, love it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and listening and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.